given a chip for a projected debt for the last year of the Bush administration of $1.3 trillion. And if we did nothing, it was projected the debt would grow over the next 10 years another $8 trillion. And these guys have the audacity, the audacity to talk about us being profitable with your money. But look, you guys elected Barack and me back then not to remind you how bad things were, but to do something about it. You told us you wanted us to act. And with the help of these three men over here and others like them in the United States Congress, we did. The first thing we did, we turned to Pat and Bernie and Peter, and we went to work. First thing we did, we appointed justices of the Supreme Court who thinks there's such a thing as the right of privacy. Yeah. brought home 100,000 combat troops, including my son, from Iraq. With the help of your congressional delegation, we invested in 30,000 infrastructure projects around America. Roads, bridges, runways, ports, fiber optic cable, high-speed internet. 165 of those projects right here in Vermont. And this, and this. Conservatives don't argue about this anymore. This and other investments. Created or saved three to three point five million jobs, seven thousand right here in Vermont. People working and would be working. And they sat, they sat on the sidelines. It would be different, Peter, if they offered an alternative. All kids aside, excuse my back, by the way. All kids aside, they offered no alternative. Let's get that part straight. I get it if they said, you know, as Barack said, we drove this car in a ditch. Those Bush policies and all Republican policies don't work. We got a different idea. This is what we should do. We think you're wrong. They did nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, just since January, with the help of your delegation, we have created eight, over 860,000 private sector jobs. That's more jobs than the Bush administration said in eight we know it's not enough. We know we need to do more. We know it's the silver miners and Delawareans and folks from California all over the country who worry whether they're going to have to make what I call the longest walk a parent ever has to make up a short flight of stairs to his child's bedroom to say, honey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, daddy lost his job, or mommy lost his job. But we can't afford to stay in this house anymore, honey. We're going to have to move. We can't go back to the same school. We can't play in the same team. My dad made that walk when I was an 11-year-old kid in Spanish, Pennsylvania. He said, Joey, there's nothing here. Dad's going to have to move. I'm going to go down Uncle Frank in Strand, I mean, in Wilmington, 155 miles away. And I'm going to get a job. You're going to live here with your grandpa. And when I get enough together, I'm going to come back and get you, Mom, and the kids. It's going to be okay. One until I got to be about 30 years old, I realized my proud, dignified father had to make an even longer walk into my grandfather Ambrose Finnegan's kitchen to say, Ambrose, I need a favor. Can you keep cheating the kids? How hard is that for a man or a woman to do? And how many don't have any pantry to walk into to ask for that help? So folks, we know we got a lot more to do. We passed the most significant health care reform in history. We don't want to repeal it, we want to make it better. Kids, a 
my kids and my grandkids who will soon be going to college to be able to be able to look. Now, I remember my dad saying to me, excuse me for being personal, but people, these guys, I just don't think they understand how real people think. I remember my dad going down in my senior year to borrow a car and, uh, down in Newark, and I remember standing and asking where he was, and the manager said, your dad's out in the parking lot. And my dad looked like a truck at me. I said, what's the matter, Dad? I was going to see your father. He said, honey, I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. Just went to the bank of Delaware and they won't lend me the money to help me get to college. And we made it. We found a way. Think how many parents have had to look at their beautiful children in the eye and say, I'm sorry. How many of you had classmates here who this summer their parents turned and said, I don't know how I'm going to get you back home. I don't know how we're going to do this. This isn't about numbers. This is about individual people. It's about individual lives. So we came along, Bernie and Pat, the Senate and said, hey, look, we're paying banks $60 billion over the next year, 10 years, to service debt, to lend money. Why don't we just take that $60 billion? We don't have any against banks. Let's take the $60 billion and directly lend it to students, allowing 8 million more families. They all, there may have been, was there anybody in the Senate voted for Bernie? I can't say, I don't think there was a single Republican who voted for him. I don't know where these guys live. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm being deadly earned. This ain't your father's Republican Party, as I said. This is a different deal. President and I came along and spent one of my hobby horses, in fact, I can tell you since I've been a senator, and getting the age of college, students. So we came up with a $2,500 tax credit. Every one of you who are a sophomore here, you have your parents, or you, if you're on your own, were able to deduct $2,500 off the bottom line of your federal income tax for every child you had in school, for $10,000 a kid. They want to repeal it. They want to block great ideas. Because look, I had, I, I, I got lucky. I had a house that went up and about. I had like Pat. Pat and I have been listed as the four poorest men in the Senate for the past, literally, the past 35 years. I'm not proud of it, but it's a fact. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I was able to sell my house because it increased in value before everything fell out. So I could help pay my kids' tuition to pay them off. They all graduated deeply in debt. Average kid graduates from this university is going to graduate $26,000 in debt. You go to a private university, you go to Muhlenberg, you're going to graduate $65,000 in debt. <coughs> Down in Pennsylvania, you go to Middlebury, you're going to graduate $65,000 in debt. So you know what Barack said? We have no problem. These guys have no problem underwriting companies taking jobs abroad. We have no problem underwriting banks. Why don't we say that no student has to pay back any more than 10% of what he earns in any one year to pay off his college loan? They literally not figuratively want to undo this. This is not a political game. One of the problems Democrats have is they don't believe in Republicans. They usually mean what they say. <laughs> and it sounds so outrageous, they think they don't mean it. But they mean it. Now, really, think about it. We didn't believe it about the last crop, but believe it, folks. And if you doubt my word, the head of the Republican re-elect committee, George W. Bush, Republican from Texas, a guy named Pete Sessions, when asked about on Meet the Press, what will he do if he went back to Congress? They said, quote, we will return to the exact same agenda. That's not, by the way, read their pledge. Their pledge to America, remember anything they held up? It's incredibly similar to the pledges your opponent is making for the state of Vermont. Let's get this straight, guys. Here we are in a situation, and I will end this. Here we are in a situation where 
As my wife, who teaches full time as a college professor while being a second lady, she has a great expression that any nation that out educates us will out compete us. Every one of you in this audience knows the single most significant thing we could do, and every study showed it for the past 35 years, is invest in early education. We're the first administration to do You got to reform the existing school system. That only means students, but teachers as well. And I've been supported by the teachers my entire career. No Democrats done that. But most of all, we said, we set a goal. We said by the year 2020, we're going to be number one in the world again in the percent of people we graduate from college. Folks, these guys don't buy that. Look at this compare Peter's opponent and what the Republicans in the Congress have done. Peter's opponent had to balance the budget. In the Pledge for America, they say we're going to cut education 20% in order to get towards with their notion of moving toward fiscal responsibility. In the same document, they say they want to give, and I'm not, you're going to think I'm making this up. <laughs> Press, check it out. <laughs> they say they want to give 120,000 families in America a tax cut worth $375 billion, with a B, billion dollars over the next 10 years, where their average income is $8.4 million a year. Now look, folks, they're not bad folks. Most of them aren't even asking for Literally. They're not bad folks. But ladies and gentlemen, they say the way to pay for that, and they're never going to pay for it, is to cut education by 20%, not invest in research and development, eliminate the 30% tax credit for people who will build new solar energy facilities, wind facilities here in the state of Vermont. Get rid of it. What's Peter's opponent talking about? He says he wants to give what amounts to, as I'm told, I'm no expert in Vermont budget, but $250 million to the top 1%, roughly 1,400 people in the state of Vermont. Now what's he talking about? He's talking about taking one of the things you should be proudest of of anything your state has done. Having the smallest teacher-student ratio in the country, 